So as we head into the colder months, what are some common dental issues people face and how can we prepare our teeth for this change in the weather? Well, I think the first thing that usually comes to mind is cold sensitivity. A lot of patients actually, or a lot of people in general do suffer from cold, like sensitive teeth. Um, but usually those patients that are suffering from cold sensitivity around the season are the ones that already have a pre-existing condition, meaning they probably already have recession or wear on their teeth, or if you just recently had some dental work done, right? Um, but yeah, that's probably the most common thing right now. And, you know, the holidays are synonymous, obviously, with sweet treats, the, uh, you know, the specialty coffees we buy, all the chocolates and the cookies. So can you talk about the impact of those holiday feasts on our dental health? And how can we enjoy them responsibly? Because please tell me you're not going to tell us to cut it right off. Oh, gosh, no, I could never do that to myself, <laughs> my kids or my family. No, we just got to obviously moderation. We already know that. But I I think people don't realize that you can have your sweets, just have it with your meal. Because when you have it with oh. your meal, yeah, because the problem is with the sweets, we're just snacking throughout the day. And it's the snacking throughout the day that's actually affecting the pH in the mouth that's causing tooth decay or causing gum disease and other issues, um, gut issues, right? Um, but it's just have it with your meal. And just take a little break and have some water after. So it really does go back to that whole, like, mom knows best where you could have dessert when you finish your vegetables, right? 100%. I mean, think about it. <laughs> I know, they were right. <laughs> you know, like my parents. They were always right. Um, <laughs> I hate that. I hate that. <laughs> but it's just the holiday season, right? Like, think about it. When you go to our family or friend's house over the holidays, it doesn't matter what we're celebrating. We're just even doing family gatherings over the holidays. We're always constantly snacking, especially on those sugary treats like your aunt makes, your sister, or your mom makes. And you're not going to not eat them, but just have them in moderation and have them with the meal. And that's going to help you. And there's other things um, that can help you as well, like xylitol gum. We can jump on that as well, because just having xylitol gum in general will help alkalinize the mouth. So eating sugary stuff is decreasing our pH making it more acidic and more likely for us to have cavities and gum disease. But then you have something like xylitol gum and mints, which is going to bring the pH up. And on top of that, xylitol has been shown to help fight cavities. Um, and it also kind of curves your sweet tooth a little bit, right? Because it's already sweet. So it helps you with that exactly. as well. And then just the sheer act of chewing actually will increase saliva production for you in the mouth. And that will also help balance, rebalance the mouth after eating as well. And just don't forget to have something basic as water. So when you say xylitol gum, mm -hmm. I think of sugar-free gum. Is it right. the same or is it like, does most of them, do most right. of them have xylitol or is there, should we be looking for that ingredient specifically? I would look for that ingredients because I don't know if you remember a little while back, um, they had said the, the negative effects of aspartame because that's another um, known sugar that's added into gums and mints. But there are studies that now come out saying it's safe, but there's also studies that say it's not safe. The studies on xylitol um, show overconsumption of it. It's not the greatest, but don't overconsume it. You just chew one for look, maybe five, 10 minutes and get rid of it. But I would just, I prefer to stay away from stuff where it says, eat with caution if there's studies that say that, right? And what about uh, the other one, eryth erythritol? That's another sweetener that's out there. I don't like alcohol sugars. Um, if you do the research on that as well, it's not just for the teeth, but really for the gut. Um, to stay away from like synthetic fake sugars, right? Like xylitol is natural and we know all not natural things are good for you, but xylitol is natural. So try to stay with more natural sugars. Um, but if we're looking for gum specifically to help you over the holidays, I would stick with the xylitol gums and mints. And what about the sugary drinks and sticky sweets that oh. are all over the place? Uh, <laughs> so, I mean, I know moderation is key, uh, but are there safer alternatives we should be looking for with these things? You're not going to not have like your wine. You're not going to have like the cocktail of the theme for the party. You know, we're good. If that's what you do and you want to drink, enjoy your drink. But, you know, just remember to water. I would say water is key. Have sips of water just for hydration, keeping the mouth clean, and to help you with the overhang the next day. I have a question for you actually about yeah. that because I've, I've heard that uh, if you brush your teeth 
too soon before having something sugary or something like uh, alcohol, that it can be more damaging to your teeth. Is that correct? 100%. So don't um, brush your teeth. Like usually even for eating, just in general with everything, with drinking. Remember, drinks can also be very acidic. Um, and don't forget those carbonated drinks a lot of people like. My kids call it um, bubbly like or bubble water, um, carbonated water even. It, it's very uh, acidic and ero- it can erode our teeth as well. So by what ends up happening is if you're brushing your teeth right before having these drinks or food, you've just made your tooth more porous. So you've just made it more prone to all these issues that these drinks can cause. Thanks for bringing oh, that up. That's your point. Yeah. That's good to know, actually, because I I I had read it and I thought I don't know if this is real or not. So I was going to wait and ask you. So that's good to know. And after, you've talked. Sorry, sorry to cut you off, but even after you have a meal, don't don't go brush your teeth immediately right after. Always just let that mouth kind of rebalance itself first, and then go brush your teeth. Always wait, usually about a half hour before you do that. So a half hour before and a half hour after. Yep. Easy to remember. Okay, perfect. Uh, You've mentioned in your notes here, remineralization, and I'm not even going to try the next word. I'm going to let you say it. (laughs) So, Can you explain how these contribute to strengthening our teeth? Yeah. So when we earlier first were talking about sensitive teeth, this is a great solution to help patients um, with sensitive teeth is a remineralizing toothpaste. And the one that I recommend is hydroxyapatite. And hydroxyapatite helps to rebuild the enamel of the tooth, um, making it stronger and helping you with the cold sensitivity of the teeth and also helping you prevent decay as well. And is, is that, so is that uh, something we would get in a dental office or something we can treat at home? Uh, you can look for the ingredients on the toothpaste that you buy. Uh, a lot of dental offices aren't really giving them out right now because they're, it is newer, but we don't really get samples of hydroxyapatite to give out to our patients. Unfortunately, I wish I did, um, but I just tell, I just recommend a couple of brands to patients. People buy everything online. It's just so easy. Just go online, toothpaste, and look for something that has hydroxyapatite, a remineralizing agent for your teeth. And while we're on the topic of toothpaste and things, what are your feelings on, uh, you know, things like charcoal toothpaste or the natural toothpaste? Do they work as well? Okay, so... Charcoal toothpaste, a lot of my patients do use it because I'm a holistic, more biological based uh, dentist. I always say, you know, just don't do it every day, uh, maybe once a week or every other week because it's the same patients also want to use baking soda. It could be pretty abrasive, but just remember our enamel is super, super strong. It's stronger than bone. It can withstand baking soda, but just not frequently because then if you are putting something really abrasive on your teeth, you're going to be more prone to staining as well. Right. So not think about how many wine drinkers, you know, and some of them get stains and some of them don't. Well, if your tooth is a rough surface, you're more likely to get stains. So just do everything in moderation. Just don't overdo it with the baking soda and the charcoal, activated charcoal. Um, The other thing you mentioned is natural toothpaste. So it depends on what's in the natural toothpaste and like what we alluded to before, what is natural, not all natural is safe. Um, I do stay away from fluoride toothpaste. Again, both ways are studies that support it and studies that don't support it. I want to be on the safer side because there's so many amazing alternatives. You know, there are patients that use fluoride religiously and still get cavities. um, And there are patients that don't use it and don't have any cavities. So I would just on the cautious side, just use an alternative to fluoride, which is hydroxyapatite, which we alluded to. Um, you also mentioned the activated charcoal and baking soda as well. All right. Excellent. I think I'm going to have to go change my toothpaste now. So thank you for joining me today, uh, Dr. Joel Hall. It's always a pleasure talking to you. And thank you for not ruining the holidays by telling us that everything was off the table. <laughs> oh my gosh. Happy holidays, everyone. And enjoy. No, of course not. <laughs>